and you don't start living in these fantasies or even just not even seeing more than what's actually there, right? Like where you're like, oh, these person said that they've done these things. So in your mind, you attribute these characteristics to them that are positive that they might not even have, right? Or there could be, you could be seeing red flags or, and you decide to give the person the benefit of the doubt because you're not sure if it's a red flag or not and you really want this. So you go into it like, okay, I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to trust and believe whatever they say because I don't, I haven't known them long enough to know that they're toxic or a liar or a manipulator or unhealthy or completely broken or whatever it is. And you're so hopeful that you're letting that hope blind your intuition and blind your judgment and blind your logic. So if you go into it with an emotional boundary that says, I am going to stay in the present moment and I'm just going to enjoy this moment and allow the moments to either add up or come to an end while remaining detached from the outcome. So setting a low expectation and keeping your values and your standards high. They, they're they non-negotiable. They don't fluctuate. They don't move for the person, no matter how much you like them, how beautiful, fun, charming, amazing. You have to stay in the present moment and remind yourself, I don't know them yet. And this is important because you don't really know a person for a long time. Okay. So, which brings me to the third <laughs> and what I feel like is the most important boundary um, of the three is um, time, a time boundary. So you have to decide for you going in what your time boundary is going to be, okay? You have to decide and hey, don't be shy, drop a comment, drop a comment. Okay. Uh, if you want to be included on the show, I'll put it up on the screen. So don't be shy. You guys just drop some comments, but hi, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you for um, listening and I love the comments and feedback. So definitely if you want to be part of the show, mm -hmm. drop a comment, don't be shy. Um, so the time boundary, like I said, probably the most important because you need to decide when you're creating this vision of this relationship. So if the relationship's not aligning with your vision severely and you're compromising your values and your standards, that's crossing a boundary, right? So you have to reevaluate this and be willing to detach and walk away from that connection because boundaries need to be firm, especially if you're a loving, sweet, kind, big hearted person who tends to see the good in others, or you identify as an empath, you need to have firm boundaries and you need to have a support system that can help keep you accountable to holding your boundaries if you're struggling or you're not good at it or or you're just a soft, sweet person that has trouble with your boundaries, male or female, you need to have a support system. And I encourage men always to join men's support groups. There's tons of them now. I had an episode with a male coach, Brandon Archer. You can find him on uh, Instagram. He has a, um, he goes to men's groups and he, he hosts some. And these are really important because sometimes a lot of people had absent fathers and it's, and as a mother who was raising boys, you can't, a woman can't necessarily um, provide that masculine energy a boy needs to be an example of, right? We can raise great men, don't get me wrong, because I'm doing it. But I have positive male role models in my son's lives so that they can get that masculine energy and that example, uh, that leadership by example, so that they can become good, strong men. And if you have, didn't have that growing up, then these men's groups, and even for if you did, these men's groups are a great place for camaraderie, support, and for healing, actually. Doing a lot of the healing so that you can become evolved men who are ready for evolved women and create more healthy, loving, safe relationships um, so that you know this world can be a better place. 
ultimately, right? We can have happier kids and happier lives. And it's a beautiful thing, really. So um, this time boundary, right, is so critical because as you're creating this vision, you need to decide what the time boundaries are for you. So for me, mine are three months. I'm not going to believe anything you say for three months. I'm going to take it in and appreciate it, but I'm not going to put any value in it. Just me. I, you can tell me anything. You can tell me that you want to marry me tomorrow. I'm not going to believe you until I see the ring on my finger. And even then, <laughs> I'm not going to believe because I want to take my time is my point. Like, I want to take my time. So it's not really about the other person. It's about you setting this time boundary. I want to take my time. So after 90 days, you start to know a person a little more. But after six months, if someone is wearing a mask, you're starting to see the mask get cracks in it. Or a person is starting to feel more comfortable with you and you're move, moving through the honeymoon stage of the relationship and going into the power struggle phase. And this is the make or break phase. If you don't know the six stages of relationships, you have got to go find out, right? The power st struggle phase is the phase where most people break up, okay? So... With that said, this is where you're going to find out how you deal with conflict. This is going to be where you need to start talking about the person's, they're just not going to be able to meet all of your needs or know what they all are. So it's going to, things are going to come up and this is where you're going to see how each person is going to deal with it. If you're dealing with an avoidant attachment style, they're probably going to cut and run, <laughs> to be honest with you, you know, unless they've been working on themselves and healing, then they may be more willing to work on things with you you know, um, to understand that you're not a mind reader and that you're not going to just know what their needs are and meet them. They've got to tell you. And, you, and, and arguments are going to happen and disagreements, and you're going to have to figure out, does this person handle conflict in a way that makes you feel safe? Or can you discuss how handling conflict makes you feel safe? What ways to do that? And this person will honor that and work with you, right? So you're going to start to see the real person but around six to eight months. And so that's my timeline, right? Six to eight months before I really, really start to, um, I think, uh, feel a little more comfortable with the person and really start to, to take the relationship in a more serious way. Not to say that you can't take it serious before then. It's just that you, if you have a time boundary in place, you want to take it slow. You want to build a friendship, build the foundation, of the relationship upon friendship, even if there's chemistry, right? You don't, I mean, I would always advise to hold off on the whole um, sexual part of the relationship, right? As long as you can, <laughs> okay? Just as long as you can. It's going to be different for everybody, but men and women deal with that intimacy differently. We're all grown adults here. You have to make your choices but to stay emotionally safe as a woman, you would want to more often than not take your time. We've got a rogue curl right there. Okay, so you want to take your time and really build that uh, foundation of friendship because men connect emotionally. They don't need sex to do that. We should all know that by now. This is like the ABCs, one, two, threes. By the time you're our age, you should kind of know that. Um, if you don't know that, there you go. Just told you. Um, you should take it slow as a female and men should respect that because honestly, women can be just as toxic and just as manipulative and narcissistic and all of that. And they can use sex in order to control men. So, I mean, no tea, no shade. I'm just being honest. Right. And I don't, I don't, I don't, um, this is a safe space for both men and women. My audience is 50% men, 50% women. So honestly, that's what it is. You have to create this time boundary to take it slow, to build that friend foundation so that you have this friendship, this companion. You can see if you're truly compatible and that, and how you flow together on your daily life right? And let those days build up. And as you're getting to really know this person, you're staying in the present. 
So each day you're in the present and then the time builds up and you can check in with yourself at three months, at five months, at eight months, at a year and see how it's going for you in the relationship. Now, of course, if you're dating after 40, those time frames might be a little different because if you're both intentionally dating, a man could know that he wants to marry you six months into the relationship because he's at a point in his life where he's ready. A lot of times men, and even sometimes after it's after 50, a lot of times men are not ready to be a long-term partner until they're 40s, 50s. So, you know, a lot of times they end up marrying the woman they are, and you've probably heard this a million times, they marry the woman who they're with when they're ready to be married. They could have loved other women more, had better relationships, but it's, they weren't ready. They weren't ready if they weren't ready, right? So that's the whole point. So it's, it can move a lot differently in the different age groups. Okay, because life is a lot different in your 40s, the, your early 40s to your mid 40s to your late 40s to your 50s. Things are different. So dating changes. It's a little different in each of those age groups. Vice, if you're having, you've had a long term relationship and you're watching this and you're like 34, 35, and you're like, okay, I'm going back on the apps. It's been a million years since I was on them, right? It's different. So your time horizon is going to be different for each of you. But you should decide that before you get into the dating world. And if you're just starting to date someone, it's not too late to put these boundaries in place. Okay. They're really important because they will keep you emotionally safe. And I think the most important thing is to stay detached, to be not to be looking for to run away from the connection is not what I'm saying. It's that if it doesn't work out, you're okay either way right? 